Hello everybody, this is Darawi here. Welcome to the November Black Ops 2 Call of Duty giveaway with other stuff. Here's my co-host, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Alice. What's up, I'm Great Paul. I am 14, hello. The man that needs no introduction! I'm gonna... It's Dara. <laughs> <laughs> Stolen. <laughs> And that was Venom feeling. <laughs> so, As usual. Being a beast. So, before we get started, right, Alex is no longer called Alex. <laughs> yeah! Finally Moving got on. alias. Good God. Yeah. He was sick fed up of everyone knowing his real life name, so he changed his name to Sorrow. Yes. Although, in Planet Side 2, you're called Sorrowful Soul. Yep, because someone took Sorrow the second it went online. <laughs> I was very disappointed. I was waiting there with the name. It's alright, when they do a character wipe, you just have to jump on really quick and claim that name before that person and piss them off. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and, and in celebration of uh, Alex changing his name to Sorrow, Alex, you've got something? I have, yes. As everyone should know, Mojang is the company that made Minecraft. Not only that, they've made other games. I have got the alpha key for one of those games named Scrolls. It's a card battler. Uh, if you're interested in it, you have a way for today about it. So yeah. Card battler? You mean Yu-Gi-Oh? It's basically, a, it's more like, like a, a cinematic version of Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh my god! No. Um, Scrolls is the new game from Mojang. One of the people Listen that are listening to this podcast live right now is going to win it live right oh. now. And we're going to do it the following way. I have sent Alex a number between 1 and 50 on TeamSpeak. Everyone that wants a chance of winning scrolls is just to send Alex a message right now on TeamSpeak with a <coughs> random number between 1 and 50. And the closest person to the number I sent is going to win that alpha key. So go, 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 spam Alex admins. You guys can enter as well if you wish. I am so entering this. Sorrow. My name is Sorrow. Just... <laughs> Send sorrow message. <laughs> I entered before you said I could enter. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that still count? The moment I heard that it was Yu-Gi-Oh, I was like, what? Right. So guys, this is Mojang's new game, Scrolls. Wrong one, Grace. Send Alex, who's now Sorrow, a text <laughs> with a random number between 1 and 50, closest to the number, wins. Why did you poke me? Oh, God's sake. <laughs> you, <laughs> it's be Alex, doesn't count. Doesn't count poke. <laughs> Alex, is anyone close yet? Is anyone close? We're about to stop it. <sighs> Who's the closest, Alex? Give, give me a second, yes, I do math. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, is that everyone? Is it... Yeah, I think that's everyone. Right, go for it, Alex. Who Last won? chance. What Who was won? the number you sent Come me? Come on, Alex. On the tension! Right. The tension! Right. Okay, <laughs> the winner is... <laughs> Where's... Okay. McLafferty. Ah, uh, oh, he always wins, man. Well, got that's that, that's right. was... The number was 27, but Lafferty guessed 27. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Right. I guessed oh, 25, I went for the midpoint. She... <laughs> <laughs> well done, McLafferty. Um, Alex will be sending you... Sorry, Sorrow will be sending you uh, an alpha key for alpha key. Mojang's new game, Scrolls. So, well done. Now... <laughs> um. A game came out on Steam this week, right? And <laughs> today I purchased it, and I got a copy for Cheeps, and I got a copy for Grave, and I got a copy for... Yeah, I got a few copies for people, right? And Alex got it as well, and it was called Trains vs. Zombies 2. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Now, if anyone goes on Steam and looks this up, it's Trains vs. Zombies. Who doesn't want to play that game? You know, the title says it all, Trains vs. Zombies. It is the best game ever. Until I played it, <laughs> I find out it's actually Train Simulator 2013, and the people are now green. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a whole new game. Basically, there's this text that come up and say, Oh no, zombies are climbing the train, please accelerate to 100 miles per hour. Oh no, the road is blocked, please reverse and change tracks. 
oh no, there's people at a platform about to get mobbed by zombies, please pick up the people. Basically, it's a train simulator, but zombies in it as an excuse to play it. So I'm very, <laughs> very upset. <laughs> but, but I've almost completed the game after a couple of hours of playing it. Thing is, though, Dara, are you going to get drawn in and buy all them DLCs now? <laughs> yeah, it's for the thousand times. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, well, I've got the game now. May as well see what this Edinburgh to Glasgow <laughs> expansion's like. <laughs> Next, he's like, well, I need a new train. There's another dinner. What he's not telling us is he actually already done that. Yeah. Clearly. So, <laughs> the thing is, the train simulator thing was actually not bad the first ten minutes, right? You're like, this In is that time, right, you never you left know? the station. I'm driving a train. Awesome. Childhood joy reenacted. And then, um, then you realise you've just been conned into getting train simulator 2013 without any of the proper train simulator stuff. It's just like five <laughs> missions. I'll last about 20 minutes each. It's so um, bad. <laughs> so, yeah, it's terrible, but I recommend you all get it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's something weird about it. I couldn't stop playing it, man. Two hours almost I played it for. In short, he hated every minute of it, but he loves it. <laughs> yeah, he just wants to make you feel bad as well. That's what he wants. <laughs> You have no idea the amount of people on Steam that messaged me while I was playing it because you buy it as Trains vs Zombies but when you play it, it pops up on Steam as you're playing Train Simulator 2013 <laughs> and the amount of people that messaged me just to take the piss out of me for playing that game was unbelievable so if you can get past the shame, get it Now he's waiting for Tractors vs Zombies Now I'm waiting for <laughs> Tra trains versus aliens. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it's exactly the same, but everyone's green <laughs> with antennas. With antenna. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just been exactly the same. <laughs> just a different name. <laughs> different For double excuses. the price. <laughs> double Great. the price. You have to play this game because I, I can't wait to hear what you think. And apparently, it's got multiplayer, but we can't find out how it works in multiplayer. <laughs> How would you do multiplayer? I, I, I say one of you be a account. passenger. One one person drives the train and the other person goes, tickets please. <laughs> User joined your channel. I, I just don't know. It's it's metal. I don't know. I, I, oh, yeah. Um the other thing is like me, Grave, Cheeps, the whole ton of us have been playing a custom game on StarCraft 2 lately called Mafia. And it's the best game in the world, guys. Best game in the world. It is pretty dark if, dark. You've got, uh, if you've got uh if you've got StarCraft two, you have to play Mafia. It's a bit weird the first time, but basically you have to lie out your back teeth. And when people on TeamSpeak lie on TeamSpeak as to what they are and the rest of the TeamSpeak users uh stick up for you the entire time and then you kill them at the end, it's even better. <laughs> Grave, what do you think of Mafia? Um, I don't know. I've I've had my feelings hurt many times, but I've also hurt other people's feelings. It's really fun. Dude, though. I mean, I've dude, played Mafia in real life the time, on. Though. I've played Mafia in real life, um, like the actual card game. So oh, oh. it's really fun because it, it, you play it with a deck of cards normally. So I really like how StarCraft adds in roles that's not even in like the standard Mafia. Reminds me of um the Wolf game. That I saw. That's played on Minecraft and on Werewolf. other games. Werewolf. That was it. It's, it time. seems exactly the same as with more people. Or trouble in terrorist town. Uh, oh yeah, we need well, to play that. It's less like that though, if you think about it. It's really actually a Minecraft though. server that is exactly like Trouble in Terrorist Town. Now it's called Mineville. Yeah, is it it's kind of like the Counter Strike GL thing? Yeah, I know. I saw that. Is it kind of like the Counter Strike GL thing? Uh, it's more like character strike terrorist in town. It's more oh, like okay. yeah, it is more like terrorist in town. Yeah, <laughs> very very good, very deceptive. Lots of lying going on. It's mainly chat based. Yeah, it's not like a major amount of action. And... Yeah, you don't you don't walk about, you don't move about or anything. You have some actions you can do at night, uh, but it's mainly chat based, and it's all about lying. Uh, to your opponents. You're not always lying though, are you? Because sometimes you say, I'm a civilian, 
Honestly, I am a civilian. People don't believe if you. If you're good at lying, you're going to win the game. Or, or, or you're like Cheeps, where you go, Cheeps, are you town? And he goes, yeah. And we go, what are you? And he goes, citizen. And then you realise isn't any citizens in the game, so he's lying out his back teeth and killing us off one by one. That's uh, Cheeps for you. Yeah. yeah. After he killed you. Yeah, it's quite was... funny. <laughs> I won my first game against Dara. It was it was good times. Yeah, it's good. So if anyone's got StarCraft 2, we're going to be playing Mafia after this podcast, and you're more than welcome to come join us and get whipped by me and Grave. Or me. Yeah. Nah. Um, and another nah. news, um, you may have heard his voice a minute ago, Travo's back. Hello, Travo. How's it going? Um, so, so the Minecraft server's been dead for a while, because um, Travo pissed off, something to do with moving house. <laughs> you know Travo, he makes a excuse. <laughs> Um, so I uh, moved. I got a nice new house. Yeah, and we—I mean, we, while he was away, we even had conversations whether it was worth continuing or anything because um, no one was doing anything on it. There was patch 1.3 came out now. Patch 1.4 is it? It's just come out, and there's loads of stuff. But Travo's back, and he's basically bitch slapped a few people, and it's getting the Minecraft. Straight. Yep, damn straight. Yep. And he's getting the Minecraft server up and running. So, Travo, you want to tell us a bit about what's going on there? Um, no, not exactly. I want to. I've got a quite a few surprises in store for what we're going to be having going on. But we should be going into beta very soon. Our two main key aspects, as far as build wise, that we need to get finished in order to start doing play testing properly, is the Elven area and the Human area. Uh, most of the other things like like the Vampiric area, Wolf, and stuff like that, uh, we'll have fully updated and ready for play in a patch later on, you know, like a typical MMORPG. Um, that way we can go ahead and get people going, get the RP flowing. There'll still be werewolves and vampires about, but you won't actually be able to access those, uh, let's call them higher-level areas, until later on when we put the finishing touches on it and pretty it up and make sure that it's perfect and for anybody that goes into those areas. Um, there are a lot of secrets that I have in store that uh, not even Portain or Dara know about Stop um, for what's going to be going on later on. Um, so we're going to have several patches after we go live, specifically for the restricted classes. And the final patch, uh, which will basically be like the end world dungeon, most people already know, is the Nether. Nobody will be able to go there until then. Um... It's pretty much just going to be me and maybe one or two people that will even be allowed access to the nether um, to help me build, but nobody else is going to even know what it's going to look like or anything like that. And it's going to be going to have a lot of very nice surprises of stuff that you wouldn't expect to see in Minecraft. It's going to take a lot of time, but it will be worth it. I guarantee that. Awesome. Now, do you still need builders? Yes, uh, the more builders that we get, the faster we can get stuff done. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the best way I can put that. Cool. So, guys, if you want to apply to build, uh, go to the website, vertisrp.net, and apply for a building spot. Try and have screenshots of examples, and you'll probably still be asked to build something before you're even allowed uh, build access to the server. Um <laughs> That's the standard of level Travo expects. It's great that you're back, man. It's great that the server's getting up and running. So I'm looking forward to the beta coming out and look forward to some videos coming back out about it again soon. Well, I also want to say something about the builders. When you're applying, you don't have to be the greatest builder. You don't have to be, uh, you know, somebody that's making YouTube videos for it. As long as you can follow directions and you can understand that you are going to be critiqued, because we expect the best for our server, and you're accepting of that. That's all that really matters. Awesome. Now, um, Halloween's around the corner next week, and oh my god, it shows. How many games have come out with Halloween updates? Anyone all know? of them. Yeah. Quite a few. Guild Wars, League of Legends. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. I was, Minecraft. I was talking to McLaughlin. A lot. User joined your channel. Which games have got Halloween aspects to them coming out? Uh, Killing the Floor has the horrible hillbilly thing. I was playing <laughs> the 
Uh, Left 4 Dead's free to play this weekend as well because of it. Yeah. Left 4 Dead 2 is play. Uh, Minecraft, League of Legends, everything. Even World of Warcraft and all the MMOs have their Halloween content uh, coming out. My, my question is, what is people's thoughts on this Halloween stuff? Is it just, is it too much? You know, I mean, some of the games you have to download like a two gig patch for this, for some stupid Halloween stuff for one day a year. Is it worth it? Anyone? It depends. If it's well that done, one. it's always worth it. If, if it's like just like a cheesy comic, like Farmville style, I wouldn't bother <laughs> ever. But if it's something that's like really clever and really well done, like League of Legends has done, by recreating a map to make it more interesting, then yes, definitely. Protein? Yeah, I'd agree with Alex. It just depends how they're good at delivering. If it's boring and you've seen it before, you're just going to go, moving on. Which is, oh. I think, why World of Warcraft is, like, renovated their Halloween. They've, like, done a new version of their Halloween instead of the Headless Horseman again. I think the problem that most games do when they're trying to do this seasonal thing is they just do a skin change. And it's still the exact same game, it just looks slightly different with the Halloween theme. Yeah. What, what I think really drives it is changing some, maybe some of the mechanics or making it something completely different and new. Like, I'm sure everybody remembers Dungeon Defenders last year when they came out with an entirely new map and changed the way that you had to deal with the mobs and how they were coming in. If games did more of the Halloween or seasonal changes like that to make it more interesting to intensify the gameplay, that makes a lot larger of a difference than just skin changes. Yeah, I still think it's silly. <laughs> as long as you get something new and it's free. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of as long as it's free, how is those RP costing new Halloween skins? Just... What do you mean, character ones? or Yeah, just, the character uh, ones. Character ones, some of them are pretty awesome. Some of them are pathetic, yeah. but <laughs> they're uh, pretty awesome. I don't like them that much. The only one I like is Headmistress. Oh, I, I really want that one. That's not Halloween skin, though, is it? I don't uh, care. It came out for Halloween. It didn't come out for Halloween. Alex, Alex it's Headmistress. Headmistress. Who would not want a skimpy Headmistress who beats you up with a cane? It's cool skin. That's not <laughs> Halloween, though, is it? <laughs> Venom, this is a gaming podcast, not your fantasies podcast. Oh, I'm in the wrong room. <laughs> yeah, I'll move you. Oh, brilliant, right, yeah. Halloween, blech, pass please. I think it's quite big in America, but I think that's the only country that really goes all out at Halloween. They do. Everyone really... else just hides in the house and hopes no one knocks on their door at night. Exactly. Japan does a lot about it, doesn't it? I always forget about that aspect being American. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't understand. I mean, I was in uh, Vegas last year for Halloween, and it was awesome. Uh, the amount of people dressed up in that, you you just don't get that over here in the UK. Mm-hmm. You just don't. Because we have lives. We don't care about it at <laughs> all. Lives, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that we get out of Halloween is sweets, occasionally. That, that, that's why we do it. For the yeah, sweets. I have a life too. That's why the first thing I did when I got home was get on TeamSpeak. <laughs> good, good. Now, with this being the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 announcement uh, podcast, I thought we'd best talk about some first-person shooters. Um, Medal of Honor just came out last week. You've got Battlefield 3 came out last year, Modern Warfare 3 uh, came out last year, you've Black Ops 2 coming out just shortly, uh, and it's getting repetitive. Have. Are you guys not sick, fed up of first person shooters They're being set same. in a modern day with modern rifles? Beyond imagining. Yeah. Every single Call of Duty with the same. first one. Mm-hmm. I, for one, with first person shooters like the old style, like Doom, where you don't have regenerative health, you don't have regenerative shields, and it's so easy, you pretty much just have to walk through and be able to aim. It doesn't really have that same. Uh, difficulty that there used to be back in 1991 before some of you guys were born. Don't forget about Counter-Strike Go. Yeah, I kind of agree with Trevor. I played Doom when I was a Eurogamer 
Right. Yeah, Counter Strike One Point Six. What George just said. That one, so far, I still think is the best Counter Strike. I think one uh, game that Dara forgot to mention really is Halo Four, and the fact Halo had a really good thing going for them. Uh, well, it's, it was busy really developing it. It's gone uh, too long. It's the problem is now they've decided to go. How about we make us Call of Duty with a different skin? Because they've just mm -hmm. added in perk systems. And it's just, it's no longer the same game, which is... Yeah, but I can understand them doing that. It's like, what's the number one selling game in the world doing? Which oh, is the it's problem. a shooter. We've got one of them. Oh, it has perks, you know, so... It's very difficult to break the chains that are around. Because they've got, you've got a massive Goliath in the room, which is obviously like Call of Duty and um, Battlefield. And... To be able to persuade like the uh, the producers and the investors to get into a game which may lose them millions of pounds, they need you need to be able to like give them a valid reason why they should be putting that much money in. And it's difficult to do. I can that. tell you why they're putting so much money in. You know, Black Ops Two um, had more sales when it started pre-selling in June than probably any other game will sell this year. It's projected 31 million uh, copies to be sold. Exactly. So why wouldn't you try and be more like Call of Duty? Because that's what the mindless morons of the public want. I don't know yeah, why they keep buying it. I gave up on Call of Duty after like Call of Duty 4. The bad thing is, I still buy them. I, I, I it's really good <laughs> to stop. I, Everyone I, does. That's the I problem. Hate, I hate the fact I, I do, but the fun. I don't. Yeah. So, before we move on, <laughs> let me ask you this. What's it going to take for a military shooter to beat Call of Duty? Planet Side 2? No, no Planet Side 2 is going to be free to play and as a PC only game, so it won't Stop. beat Call of Duty. And as much as Planet Side 2 is the best shooter ever, it is. no matter what anyone says, um, what is it going to take for a mainstream game I reckon to beat Call of Duty? The problem with that question, though, Dari, it's either the mainstream or what the real gamers actually want. Because we're going to want something completely different than what's going to actually end up selling. And that's all that they seem to care about these days, especially like EA, or even like the perfect example, Apple, or they're just milking it and milking it and trying to get as much money as they possibly can. That's all that matters. What they need to do is add in better gameplay, add in something completely new and unique and different than we've seen before. Like when Bioshock first came out, or uh, what was that other game I was just thinking of? Help me out here. What up, Penny? Mm hmm. Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Dora the Explorer. Hello Kitty Adventure Island. Best one. <laughs> All of the hardcore games like that. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll leave it to that. the public to decide what they think should be coming in a first person share, but it's going to take a lot to beat a game that sells 30 plus million games. And as we go into last week's podcast with League of Legends stats, there's still 3 million people a month play Call of Duty. So, you know, that's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, the <laughs> because War Z, it's easy. Makes the World still good. War Z Alpha is still going, and there's still an NDA, so we can't talk about War Z. But what we can talk about, uh, and we can't talk about War Z till next week's podcast, which I can't wait to hear all about. But what we can talk about is Daisy. Are <laughs> Is War Z going to be better than DayZ when the DayZ standalone comes out in a couple of months? I think so. It depends. When it's fully it done, doing. when it is fully done, I think it will be better than DayZ. But right now, I've been talking to a lot of people that play War Z, and they think DayZ is better just because War Z doesn't have all of its features. And I mean, I've been talking to people that they don't even have a friends list implemented, unless they've done that recently. But Last time I talked to someone, they said well, they don't have their friends we, list. We can't disclose yet. if it has a friends list implemented because of the NDA, <laughs> but but it's okay. <laughs> well, it's shh. As always. Uh, edit, just edit that out. Just edit that. It has a. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Wasn't it? Just beat me over. Wasn't it Daisy that uh, they were going to put dogs or something in? Yeah. Which kind of ruins yeah. the point. It's, it's not like a No, not really. But, it totally zombie dogs. It totally, if it was zombie dogs, I, I wouldn't mind it, but it's the fact that it's dogs that are your pets, it's like, seriously, uh -huh. we're not playing I Am Legend. 
<laughs> of course not. Yeah, we saw how terrible that was, though. The thing died in a couple of seconds. It didn't last very long. Yeah, but Plus, the dog was cool. Plus, still has the, a major, like, hacking issue. It's like, yeah. we're implementing dogs, but the hackers can stay. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, you going on a server and then getting killed instantly by a guy who's on the other side of the map. Ah, oh, well, at least you've got dogs. <laughs> MLG Pro, dude. MLG Pro. <laughs> <laughs> need to find a way to possess his dogs and make it kill the owner, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> now, one last thing before we announce the Black Ops 2 winner. Um, last week we announced the Venom Christmas Challenge where we're going to have two teams of four, Team Dara versus Team Venom. Venom, you got any updates on your team? I've got one official member. That's funny you should say that, I have one official member too. You want to announce who your member is? Bet you can guess who it is, as well. No, no, you can announce it. Make it special. It's it's Pony, which wasn't really a Dear surprise. God. I Pony told you, I'm going for the most stupid team. Well, at least <laughs> my official person can tell you themselves. It's my official person they want to tell you. User disconnected from your channel. Yeah, like how someone left when you said that. Subits, <laughs> 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 <Sub> yes. <laughs> It, it was too for shy. those of us that weren't here for the last podcast, what's the Christmas thing you're talking about? <laughs> uh, over Christmas, Team Dara is going to play be playing Team Venom in three different games. Um, one game of my choice, one Venom's choice, and a Minecraft custom map. The loser of this challenge will do an embarrassing YouTube video uploaded to their YouTube channel. Featuring themselves doing something embarrassing that we've yet to disclose. That's not really fair. All Venom has to do is put up any of his videos. Well, Trevor, don't worry, you're spotlighting in this video. <laughs> hey, I'm back. <laughs> burn. 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 Anyway. Right. anyway, my guy's grave. <laughs> Yeah. And we've got our game picked already, but I'm going to wait until I find out who your team is, Venom, before I tell you what the game is. I'm no, not going to have no. you given a chance to practice. Screw that. That'd be my little pony in there. <laughs> I don't even know what game it is. It's my little pony. <laughs> we wouldn't be surprised, Venom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As, as long as it's not Dora the Explorer, because I'm a bit out of practice with that now. Getting practice, yeah. you best be collecting them carrots or whatever it was with that unicorn. It was carrots. Right. Yeah. Right, one last thing before we announce the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 winner. Um, no, there's not actually. <laughs> Skip that. <laughs> it's time to announce the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 winner. <laughs> <laughs> now, um,. The way to win the copy of Black Ops 2 was just to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel Veritas RP. Uh, many people subscribe, probably because of this video. And according to Travaux, not because of the quality of the videos. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and the winner was some guy called Egro O Egg. <laughs> There's a good story now, behind this. It was a random thing. We <laughs> had no idea who this guy was, but before the podcast started, we uh, messaged the guy to let him know he had won so he could add me on Steam so I can send him his copy of the game. And the guy messaged back and saying, uh, actually, I already have Dara added on my friends list because it, uh, it's me, George Gromick. Is an old, old Minecraft player. He used to come on TeamSpeak all the time. And uh, I believe George is on TeamSpeak the now. So, George, congratulations, mate. There'll be a copy of Black Ops 2 coming towards you later on this evening. So, well done. Yay, George. Yay. Stop happy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> George, we did not realise that your YouTube channel name was the words George Gromick written backwards. We just thought it was a random person. We um, went on your channel and did a bit of scouting. But it just goes to show we do do this completely fair. We did a bit um, of scouting, tried to figure out how you are. We spent about three minutes trying to pronounce that name because we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. Um, we weren't sure who it was. 
So well done. I'm actually really pleased that it's a Veritas member, a proper Veritas member that's won it, and not some random who just subscribed because they wanted a copy of Black Ops 2. So I'm happy about that. Now, the November giveaway uh, is going to be quite a big thing. We have not finalised the details for it yet, so we're going to be announcing the competition next week. But I can tell you that the prize will be a £120, pillow. Pound, or it's roughly about $140 worth of games for you and your friend of games of your choice. <gasps> so, um, it's about the cost of two and a half brand new full price retail games or two brand new f retail games and a uh, indie game. Uh, Hold on just a second, I'm going to make a hundred fake accounts. Yep, on you, on any game of your choice, competition details will be in next week's weekly podcast, which will be returning next week. Um, now, has anyone on the team speak have any questions before we leave? We're going to open it up to the audience. Go, go, go. Gotcha. Nope. Good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Again, George, congratulations. Um, well done, mate. Um, That's I will be speaking question, you bro. just after this because I'll need confirmation you are over 18 or you have parental permission to get this game and then I'll be sending it to, uh, to you over Steam. Um, so, well done to all. And we will see you all next week in next week's podcast, guys. So, yeah. cheerio. Before we end, you have a question there, Dar, that you're ignoring. Oh, no, yeah, McLaffey is no. asking There's you what no your question. name is. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. No question. <laughs> no. There is no question. I oh, know. We're still rolling. We're getting I this question. See a question <laughs> We're still. Mark, Mark. McLafferty. McLafferty. I, I did not see a question mark. I don't away. see any questions. <laughs> right, so you can all say goodbye now, guys. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Don't worry, McLaughlin, we'll get it out of him by the next episode. Oh, Brave sounds happy. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. I'm so sad.